Let's say I want to drive from Vox's New York office to our office in DC. That produces about 112 kilograms of CO2. But in an electric vehicle or EV, that same drive produces zero emissions. It's all thanks to this rechargeable battery, a lithium ion battery that powers the car's electric motor. If all road vehicles were electric, we'd be able to wipe out about 18% of all CO2 emissions, the most prominent greenhouse gas driving climate change. But producing these powerful batteries can do real environmental damage. Nickel, the key ingredient in EV batteries, has to be mined and smelted in a process that contaminates waterways, drives deforestation, and pollutes the air. And there's no better place to see this than outside nickel processing plants in Indonesia, next to where people like Asvina live. These particles are finer than beach sand and are harmful when inhaled. The same nickel paving the way for a green future is causing life-threatening problems for the people who live near its production centers. But it shouldn't be this way, because Indonesia is sitting on one of the biggest sources of clean energy in the world. An energy source that could help clean up the dirty and often hidden side of green energy. Indonesia has the world's largest proven nickel reserves. Most of them are found here. So is a large concentration of the country's nickel processing plants. A lot of this nickel supplies the steel industry, but most of the growth the industry has seen in recent years is driven by the demand for EV batteries. Demand that's predicted to skyrocket. To extract the nickel, the rocks have to be smelted at really high heats. And that energy is almost exclusively provided by coal-fired plants that spew greenhouse gases and pollute the air. As Fina's story isn't an isolated incident. Records of medical visits in her area show that respiratory infections are by far the most common health issue. Data from 2017 and 2018 suggest respiratory diseases are increasing in the region at a much faster rate than other ailments, but the government has yet to release the latest data. For Asvina, who has lived in the area since she was a child, there's no doubt things are worsening. Nickel is essential for a green future, but using coal-fired plants isn't actually necessary, especially in Indonesia. Indonesia sits along the Pacific Ocean's Ring of Fire, a stretch of hundreds of active volcanoes that sit on top of pools of hot magma. We only really see the immense power of this heat when it pierces through the Earth's surface. But when it's close to the surface, that magma also heats the water trapped beneath the Earth. That hot water can provide a continuous and renewable flow of energy called geothermal energy. To capture that energy, we need to drill down to reach underground water. Then hot water or steam rise up to a well. In a power plant, that hot water is often used to heat a different liquid that is then vaporized and used to turn a turbine to generate electricity. Meanwhile, the clean water extracted is funneled back into the ground where the Earth's magma reheats it once again. And that fluid is recycled. So there are no uh, emissions of any gases to the atmosphere. In that sense, it's a completely green, uh, carbon-free energy source. Plus, it doesn't rely on the weather like wind or solar energy do. Indonesia is the second largest geothermal producer in the world. On the same island where coal-fired plants are powering nickel production, there's a plant tapping into geothermal power. There are about 20 active geothermal plants. There are also tens of sites explored for development. One of the biggest things holding geothermal back in Indonesia and other parts of the world is cost. And then once you've got evidence that there's a resource, the idea is then to figure out, you know, how big is the resource, how hot is the resource, and how much would it cost to develop that type of resource. Longer timeline, higher risk factor, and higher uh, initial investment costs 
are all things that make geothermal more challenging to, to, to put online. And while geothermal maps like this one can help identify possible hotspots, you never know what you're going to find until you actually drill. Over time, the hope is that geothermal exploration will become cheaper, more predictable, and so efficient that it'll bring the cost down. But it can be tough to change an existing industry, especially if there's a lot of money in it. Encouraged by Indonesia's push to attract foreign investment and deregulation of environmental protections, Chinese companies have invested or committed about $30 billion to nickel plants in Indonesia, particularly in Morawali, where new coal-fired plants like this one are being built to power the investment. For people like Asvina, the fact that geothermal doesn't produce emissions or air pollution could make it the solution they are looking for. Because if nothing changes, they might have to leave their homes. Ya, harapan kami sebagai masyarakat untuk kedepannya. Mudah-mudahan kami bisa dapat tempat yang lebih layak atau yang lebih nyaman dari sebelumnya. Today, geothermal plants are mostly confined to volcanic areas. But our EV batteries are made of metals and minerals from around the world. And about 60% of the energy we use to process them comes from fossil fuels. There's enormous potential for cleaner EV battery production in all these yellow and red regions if we dig deeper and find ways to tap into the underground heat, whether there's underground water or not. Like every new resource, the work we do to harness it requires careful consideration. How do you preserve parklands and how does that coexist with geothermal development? The other issue that seems to come up a lot when I read about geothermal is um, seismic activity. Most of the geothermal induced seismicity that occurs is very low level seismicity, but the goal is to not have significant seismicity that could cause damage and uh, distress to local communities. The challenges are to make these, these environmentally, socially and economically viable. And that's a very important challenge, especially if we think of geothermal as a solution to clean up the supply chain that powers our green energy. Because all too often, it's poor and marginalized communities who live next to power plants, smelters, mines, factories, pipelines, waste plants. As we move towards a better future, it's important to make sure it isn't just green, but fair. <laughs> Itu saja.